Okay, we're going to make a little start, um, as you can see from the files that I'm going to show you. Top left hand side, you can see that it's a raw file from the camera, it's unedited, it's uncropped. So all of the files that we're going to go through during this little session, that's how we're going to find them. I'm just going to take it nice and easy, have a brew while we talk you through it. But um, Lightroom recipes, you'll have all heard, heard of Lightroom presets. Well, recipes is very, very sort of, it's similar if not the same. But um, what it is, is we've sort of formulated a bit of a plan as to sort of go about making your own presets and editing your own images in some sort of order. Like which tools do I start with first? Uh, what do I look at first? Or are you just one of these who sort of just goes on, wings it a little bit, moves a few sliders up and down, and then comes up with a, a fantastic image at the end? Uh, there's no problem, it's all fun in learning, but just this is a little bit more strategic, it's a little bit more staged, there's a bit more of a process to it. Now, why the, why Lightroom recipes over above anything else? Um, some of you may be familiar with Fuji cameras, and I've been ranting on for quite a while, that in the camera, they you can build recipes. This allows you to play with all the different colour tones and many settings that go with that. And in the live, live preview before you commit, you can see how it's adjusting your image already before you commit to pressing it. So on the basis of playing with all of these settings on my Fuji camera, I thought we can build a similar thing out of Lightroom. So firstly, what we need to do is we need to establish, it's an 11 point sort of process. I mean, you can do lots more. It's just a bit of a guide this for you. But we're going to build a little bit of recipes to go with the image. So what we need to do first is we need to go across to the develop module. So we're in develop and we're just going to do that. We're going to develop the image. So firstly, what you need to do with any image before applying any sort of color toning um, or color profiling, then you would look at your exposure first. So you can sort of use your exposure on the slider just on the right hand side and up and down until you're happy with your own exposure from your image. So if we sort of say something about there and then the very next thing you want to look at is your shadows palette. Now shadows is a fantastic tool. I don't know if everybody uses it or not, but what shadows will do will open up the darker areas of your image. So if you're taking a little look at his gloves now, if I to put the slider right over to 100, which could be overdoing it. You can see how it's just giving back some of that inner detail in the gloves. So if we go in there, we'll stop somewhere around about there. So what we've done is we're not taking big steps there. We've just adjusted the exposure and we've, uh, we've adjusted the shadows. <clears throat> so the next thing, this is the base for our sort of image. We need to go up to the color profiling. So just here, there's a little pipette thing and white balance just above it. It says Adobe color and there's little arrows. We just drop that down and we hit the browse key. Now in the browse key, let's just close everything down. It's probably like this if you've never used them before. <clears throat> Adobe is kindly giving you eight lots of artistic, you know, modes or settings. 10 lots of modern and 10 lots of vintage. They've got black and white in there as well, but we're not going to touch on the black and white today, but um, you have a go at them in your own time. So what we're going to do is basically, let's if we just drop one of these down, let's just start with artistic, because that's the first one. You can see that it's got a color or it's got a, a little adjustment. That it gives you a bit of an idea of what it's going to look like. If you just wand your mouse onto it, it'll adjust your picture. And basically, we're going to look, I mean, look, if we go back into the picture, that's the original, that's the new one. The very slight adjustments, look, there's some really great sort of color profiles in here, but we're going to choose one. So even if you have to check through all of the ones that Adobe's given you, there's only 28. So you can go into vintage. So when we got your vintage there, and we're looking really for a base. So don't worry if it's too light or too dark, because we can, here is a slider for how much this is applied. 100 goes in at the value you see when you're selecting it, and you can reduce that more towards the original look, or you can push it even more into that kind of filtered feel. So if it's this one here, um, let's say we selected that, 
we adjust the amount up it'll go darker and it'll go more contrasty and we can also blend it down but 100 is bang in the middle is where it'll already sort of set you at so as we're sort of going through them we're looking for one that maybe complements our image more than another or one that you prefer so let's have a little look here if you see my little monitor you know moving up and down or do it on my face it's just because i've got me um me, me webcam you know mounted up high and it's a uh, it's on top of something and it's a uh, not the best but hey no worry about that we're going to go on we're going to look for a a, <clears throat> a setting to use modern two modern four they're all quite good and we're probably going to hit this particular one here and it's modern three it's giving us kind of at the moment a brown tone but we're going to sort of just settle on that and we can then look at the strength of it do we want to take it back back towards its original picture or do we want to take it up and make it a little bit more contrasty a bit more moody what we'll do there is we'll go for about 130 and we'll close it so what you've done so far you've just done taken three little steps you've looked at your exposure you've looked at your shadow your shadows and then you've found a base profile so just like when you're cooking if you were making a sauce the typical thing is you would have to make a roux if anybody's into sort of a bit of chefing that's the base of sort of most or many sauces this is exactly the same with Lightroom uh, we're just creating our base so then we're going to apply things to it so what we're going to do now is first and foremost we're going to have a little look at the crop so once you've applied the base we can do the crop you can do the crop anywhere you want in the picture but I'm going to do the crop after applying our base setting so there we go let's see if we just take a little crop inside of the bars of my background from the studio so they're not um, there's a vignette to this image. It's not been applied in post or anything like that at the moment. Some of the backgrounds I use at the studio automatically have a lighter center and a darker outer to give me that sort of feel. But um, there we go. So <clears throat> we've cropped our image and now we're going to have a little look at the clarity. So we just want to boost that sharpness a little bit. Now don't go too heavy on this. I used to say go be no more than sort of 15. But even now I've started to sort of creep in towards with, with sort of male models and some sort of character stuff I do in sort of 30, sometimes 40 in there. So if I go in there, uh, we'll probably let's just leave it at 20. We can always reduce that later on, but we're in there at 20. And then what we've do, we're going to do, we're going to go into our black slider. So black slider is our next point and we can reduce the blacks by going to the lighter and it opens up our black areas a little bit like our shadows palette did or we can move our palette down to give it that sort of moody feel that we might be looking for so if we sort of say somewhere like there we've not taken very many steps at the moment and already we've gone from our original image at that and we've popped into this kind of more of a painting kind of feel already it's starting to go in that direction and then what we're going to do is once we've hit our black slider we're going to add a little bit of a, a color grade in there so if we slide our panel down until you get the three circles now throughout um, my sort of lightroom recipes i only use shadows so it's this one here you feel free to sort of make up your own sort of plan of action if you will when you're editing but this is pretty good I and mean, you can always tone the mid-tones and the highlights later to find them very sort of distracting and not as accurate as I'd like to be in Lightroom so the shadows for me is what makes it so if we hit the shadows let's just go a bit extreme the further out to the circle is going to be really deep and the more you come back to the middle it's going to be a much sort of softer lighter color so if I go into red now and hit that you can see how oh, that's really drastically crazy and I can move it to sort of hit the greens and the yellows you might just like something that you end up on but for me they're probably a little bit bit or a bit overly done <clears throat> so just going subtle is the key if you drag it it's on a little line you see now it's moving it up and down and you have a little center spot like a little pin like a bullseye on a dartboard if you take it so the outside of the circle is just touching that pin so if you look at this little tool now I've got a little bit of color coming into my shot and 
the outside of the circle, if I move this around like a steering wheel, this little side, it's just going to gradually, if you look at the image now, we've got like little tone changes. So if you look at it now, it's going a little bit more greeny, a bit more sort of gold. We're starting to make it a little bit more richer in its tones there. So we're getting this sort of quite a nice grade without it affecting our skin tone too much. So we can stop pretty much wherever we want to on this. We can probably go, I'm going to go somewhere maybe a little cooler uh, like that. And then if you do want to adjust the strengths, you can adjust it a little bit back and forward but the starting point is go as close as you can so you don't overcook it so we're going to go there a little bit and then we're going to come back up our tools palette so we're going to come right back up and we're going to look for the dehaze so the dehaze can either put a lightness to your image like so the more you sort of slide it less you slide it or it can darken your image so you sort of want to sort of work out where you want to go with it if we go there somewhere now, we're just going to make it a little bit darker for this particular image. And if I just show you our before, that's our original out of camera raw file. And this is already starting to come alive now a little bit, in my opinion. So once you've done, sort of done your, your dehaze, you're going to double check your highlights. So that's part of the process because whilst we've been adding all of these sort of color profiles and making adjustments, it can affect our whites and our darks and our shadows still. So we're gonna visit our highlights now and we can, if you can see you can move them right down to nothing or you can, if it was a bit dark, you could move them up. But in this sort of case, we're just gonna take a little bit of the highlight off. So it, you know, it gives him slightly better on his sort of jump or his top or his arms. And it's quite cool in his face as well. So once we've done that, <clears throat> we want to sort of look at maybe a little bit of a vignette. We've got one in there already, but let's just apply a little bit of a vignette. You can sort of... Where are you, vignette? Come to me. I'm just going to shut it down completely, give it a massive vignette, because you don't seem to be applying it. Come on. No, I'm not sure why my Lightroom vignette isn't working. Yours will work. So, with that in mind, I'm going to just do a little one. Little one, just so 20, midpoint, about the same way. Just in case it pops in when I, um, if I was to export that. Uh, no real reason why mine isn't adjusting. I've just had to delete Photoshop on off my uh, MacBook just so that I can stream tonight. My scratch disc is full and it needs a lot of attention, so that may be something to do with what, what I've done there, but uh, let me just try it again well. Whilst I'm chatting. No, oh, my vignette doesn't want to work. But your vignette, I'm sure, will be super pretty. <laughs> so you stop your sort of vignette where you're looking for, and then <clears throat> once you've applied your vignette, the final step that I take is to re-look at your shadows, because again, even though we made an adjustment right at the beginning, because we've sort of added blacks and we've we've played with the dehaze slider, we may just need to open up our shadows a little more. So paying more of attention to his gloves. If we hit the shadows and we can just raise the shadows up, he's pulling the background in quite nicely as well. Let's just go crazy and go max it out to 100. So <clears throat> there you go. That's pretty much in a nutshell. But we're gonna we're gonna do it again. We're gonna take it through nice and slowly. We're going to do this a couple of times so that hopefully it's all sort of stick and you'll be able to come up with your own sort of Lightroom recipes. So let me just show you what that this um, what it would look. So if you look your, your backslash key um, is going to sort of show you from two, or you can use your little comparison down here where it's two Y's. You can see now the original to the new one. You can see where you've got a little bit of a slider in there. You know, you can see before and after. And you can see basically what it's doing. But I much prefer to just go with the backslash. You can just go from to. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll leave him there. He's looking all cool. It's um, my one of my latest shoots is this one. Really had a good time on this. It was a fantastic shoot awesome character 
The Witcher if anybody's watched that. But um, so what we'll do now is we'll pick up an image that you may have all seen in mind before. And this is the raw file though. This is how it came out of camera. Now, what you obviously want to do before applying your recipe is clean up your image. So I'll do that super quickly on here. What we've got basically is we've got two distracting lines where the background's creased and you can just see a little bit of my light stand creeping in there. So ordinarily I find Photoshop better for the cloning, but let's just do a quick clone in here or using the healing tool. And my brush is there and I'm just gonna wand down that and wherever it brings me, I'm just going to drag this just to make a little bit of an adjustment. It's picking some of the dress up. Let's bring that across and we'll drop it somewhere about there. I'm only doing that quickly just to sort of, just to take a little bit of the distraction away more than anything. There we go. You can go over it as many times as you want. I'm just, like I say, looking to move that distraction. Let's just go over it a little bit more because the distractions becoming a distraction. There we go. And you get the idea. It's nothing to do with our Lightroom recipe, but it is to do with getting your image looking as good as you can get it. Right, so this is where we'll start now with our recipe. So if you've got that little bit of paper wrote down, you want to make a little list, it's a list of 11 steps. So taking you through nice and slowly, your first step is gonna be an exposure adjustment. So if you're looking at just making a little bit, if you find it's right, adjust it anyway, because you can always put it back to zero. You might like the way it looks a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. So now we're just gonna, We've lightened it up a little bit there. We don't want to go too much because that would be a face burning out on this particular image. So step one, check the exposure. Step two, check the shadows. So we've got our shadows there and we're going to open the shadows up. And if you see then it was quite, a, if we sort of close the shadows down, you can see even though it only looks minor, it's opening up part of that dress to the bottom and just giving us a little bit more details in the shadow area. And right, so there are two steps. And now we're going to find our base or our color profile. So if we were to go up here, we're going to look for a color profile that's more suited. We're going to drop this profile down. We're going to hit browse. And the artistic panel is still open from before. So as we wand over them, you can see that we're getting different looks to this image. So I'm going to choose one just to get us started and get us going. So artistic four is where I'm going to come. It's giving us kind of nice brown palette. So you've only done three steps at the moment. You've done your exposure, your shadows, and you've chose a base. Then you're going to check your base, whether you want it a bit more like the original, like that, or you want to push it further than the 100 but be careful you don't get that sort of on this particular look it a little bit more of a umpa lumpa kind of orangey feel let's give let's leave that at 100 at where it was set when we turned it on then we're just going to close that but always check that anyway because you might find a different balance within that um, color profile so once we've done that we're going to go in there and we're going to re crop your image if you need to. So step four will be to crop your image. I'm not going to crop this one. Address is already going to the edge. And step five is going to be a clarity change. So even if you're happy with what it's doing, why not check it anyway? So you could see if you're looking at her face, we can soften it. Or we can obviously give her that little bit more. I would say with this shot, I'm just going to move the clarity slider to about... 30. That's going to help bring some of the detail up from the flowers and in her headband because she's quite small and every little detail is going to matter. Don't go too much, but um, you just do it to your sort of taste. <clears throat> Once you've hit your clarity, we're going to look at our black slider. So do you want the picture lighter, opening up the blacks, or do you want the picture darker? Depending on what image you're sort of using. So on this uh, I think we're going to open them up a little bit. It's going to sort of open those shadows. Now, the reason I use a lot of the shadow slider and I don't go straight into a contrast, even though I do use contrast, is contrast is going to 
white and the whites, dark and the darks, and take over the face. So if I was to move the contrast now on here, I'll give you an idea. I'm not going to keep it like that. You can see how I'm getting really bright on the face and dark backgrounds. So I much prefer to use my black slider and my highlights tool to sort of control my own version of what I would see my contrast to be. But anyway, we've now just done our black slider and now we're going to look at the color grading. So if we're looking at sort of now adding some color which wasn't there in the first place, now you don't have to do this, but you could, why not have a look at it anyway? So we can start, let's hit the blue and let's just put the outer edge of that just to near the dot or on the dot and then you can wheel this round absolutely slow as the day to give you a different feel to your image. So you can see now we've got quite a nice sort of look, a bit of purple in there, a bit more red to give it that sort of maroon kind of look. I think I'm just going to apply it there um, because we're going to adjust a few sliders in a moment. I think that that's going to look great. So that's our original image. That's a couple of adjustments and we're now in there. Obviously, when we get to, when we finish, we would have corrected a little bit of this creasing on the side. It's a bit heavy, just right in the corner there. But um, that's not part of the recipes that I sort of put together. So <clears throat> we've done the color grading. Now, from color grading, we're going to use the dehaze slider. That's going to lighten or darken our image. You can go a bit crazy with this, but it's a great slider. So we could choose to go lighter. But don't go too much because it does create that. It does create a haze, it's what's in the name, or well, we could go darker. So in the dehaze, we're going to just go a touch darker, something about there. So once we've dehazed our image, we're going to check our highlights. So checking our highlights is a huge importance. You can see now I'm just bringing back the detail in her face and in her dress. And I'm probably just going to reduce the highlights just a little bit to something there, minus 14. Then I'm going to take a look if I need to put a vignette in there. If your corners or your outer edges are distracting, a vignette might help. My vignette might not because it might not go in. Oh, it's happy today. Didn't like that last image, did it? Well, anyway, we've got a bit of vignette there and we've just applied it very subtly so it doesn't sort of really creep into our dress. Let's just give you an idea of, you know, you can go crazy with it. Whatever you want to stop it. I'll just pull it so it's just touching just the outside of our image, something there. And if I show you from two, we've got our few adjustments, our original image. Now we've got an image which is starting to come alive. It's starting to pop out. Once we've done our vignette, I'll do a final shadows check. Um, we can't go any more on the shadows, but we could if we wanted to make them darker. But I'm going to leave them there at 100. So, <clears throat> 11 steps uh, and you can see sort of how effective they are. We're going to do one more and we're going to put one more in there and we're going to do this one I think, this one. So you may have seen this image, I've shared it recently, I did some work on that. But uh, this is the raw file, if you take a look at the top it's a CR3 file from Canon. And that shows you exactly the lens that I was using there. So that was a 135 lens at 1.8. So I'm just going to run you through all those 11 steps so that you can, if you've not wrote them down already. So number one is check your exposure. Number two is to check your shadows. Three is to apply your base. I'll slow down a little bit just in case you're writing. Um, once you've applied your base or your color profile, then you would look to take a crop off your image. So take a look at the crop anyway. You might not need to do anything. This particular picture doesn't need a crop. Uh, after cropping, we're going to look at the clarity of our image. Now, use the slider both ways because you may want to improve it. You may want it to be crisp. But equally, it can look very nice when you take some of the clarity off an image. So don't be shy and don't be sort of worried about taking the clarity off. The next step from clarity is going to be your black slider. So that's going to determine how dark your black areas are in your image. Once you've done your black slider, you're going to look at your color grade within the mid-tones. You can use this any way you want. This is just my advice. It's the way I do things. 
and <clears throat> once you've sort of graded and you use your mid tones we're going to come back to the dehaze now do you want it a little bit more to the light that's going to start to create a haze or do you want to close it down more and make it darker to the right hand side once we've done the dehaze we're going to recheck our highlights just to see if the image that we've created you know all of those steps hasn't sort of pushed our highlights up and we may just need to reduce or add the, hi the highlights there once we've sort of done the highlights um, I take a little look at the vignette a lot of my images just have a slight darkening on the edges of the shots you don't have to do this you can go a lot more to the middle or you don't have to use them at all but I, I like to use them and finally I retake a look at my shadows layer and then I might save my sort of preset there and then you know so that's sort of nice and simple there's 11 steps there so we're going to do the one last picture on this particular one and then we're going to come back and um you know anybody wants to ask any questions you know that's absolutely fine um, if you're on social media and i've reposted this i might be putting this onto youtube and if you're watching it on youtube uh, ask questions in the comments below right so what we're going to do is going to make um, adjustments so the 11 step process that i put together we're going to check our exposure so our exposure of our image we're going to look at that and you can go crazy or you can go wherever you need so i'm going to just make them quite subtle something about there is probably fine for me then we're going to look at our shadows so this is why we should always check our exposure and our shadows before applying our base so we're going to get the shadow slider and do we want if you can see now this it's opening up a hair if you look at a hair and you can see it's just bringing out a lot more hair detail so i'm going to go in there somewhere around about the 80 mark looked quite nice so we'll, we'll leave it there and then once we've gone from the sort of sh shadows we're going to create our base color so our base on there and hit the brows and we're going to hit artistic you can sort of see all these little base colors or some of them push certain colors into your image if you look at the, our original and look at this one it's now starting to form some sort of blues and rusty colors in the background and there's a few in there so you find one that you want there's the modern palette and you can sort of see we're getting quite nice tones just from wanding over the color profiles so we're going to pick one so what we'll do is if we sort of stay in this modern palette that one looks quite nice the one across is a bit more brown let's go with the brown one there so what we've done already we've only taken three steps exposure shadows and applied our base we can then just check whether we like what it's doing we can go a little heavy on that or we can make it a little bit more towards the original i'm going to keep it as it's given us I tend to do mostly when using these particular sort of bases just leave them at 100 sometimes I'll push them a little higher very rarely do I come to the left on them um, so we're going to close down our base layer and we're going to look at the crop of our image now I don't really need to crop this so I'm going to leave it as is and from looking going from the crop we're going to look at the clarity so crop then clarity and we can make it really soft and disappearing almost like a picture like a almost cartoony in a way or we can over sharpen it or sharpen it so we we can go anywhere we want in the middle so in the center is exactly as you shot it and i think i'm going to show you a little bit of a reduction most people go the other way but if we look now at the reduction so we'll go from two this is our new picture and that was our original so I'm going to reduce it, just give it slightly softer. It's not soft in the fact it's not going to give you a nice print. It's not going to look good on social media. It's just taking away and almost smoothing that skin a little bit by giving it a little bit more of a softer touch. You know, <clears throat> people sort of really worry about making their images softer. They've got to keep going sharper, sharper, sharper. They've got to have the sharpest lenses. But sometimes when it comes to skin, a little bit softer can really sort of do the world of good. So once we've done the clarity we need the black slider so if we go into the black slider we can make it lighter on the edges or we can make it darker so you know it's up to us really where we go with it so we'll go probably darker lighter uh, 
seen so it was a difficult decision i'm going to go lighter i can always have my vignette in at the end like i will do so you can see now we're opening up the image and it's starting to sort of work for us so i don't need to go to sleep we're doing three images so this is the last one of the three um but the reason i've done three and we've used the same method throughout is just to sort of hammer it home a little bit so you know it sort of maybe sort of makes a bit more sense especially if you're new to lightroom uh or photoshop but um right so then what we're going to do once we've sort of done our slider on our blacks and we're going to hit some of the color grading so the color grading again i'm only using the shadow tone and if we was just to start just about there let's just move that little circle so it's more near the center and again just move it a little bit and sort of look for colors that work for you so that's quite a nice tone there and that's adding a little blues to our already browns we can put a little bit of green in there but i think we're keeping it really subtle i will probably stop somewhere about there so once you've added the, the um, the color grade it's a subtle subtle color grade as well then we're going to look at our dehaze slider so we can go lighter or we can go darker Up. let's just go about there on the dehaze right then we want to check our highlights we've got a little bit of a warm spot on her hand but let's just check how it uh, it affects her face it's the face that matters more than the hand so when you're sort of balancing it up have a little look you can always use it just a little uh, retouch brush just to darken the hand on its own and then we're going to take a little look if we need to add a vignette to that uh, whether we do or we don't Oh, my vignette's playing up again. Doesn't like all my images, does it? Well, <laughs> anyway, you're going to add a vignette. Well, if you want it. And then you're going to look at how strong it's going to be. I'd probably say from 0 to 20, minus 20 is quite good. And then pull your midpoint in about the same. So it might just pop out there when we do. So once you've done your vignette, your final check is to go and have a look at your shadows. And if you just need to just change any of them because of what we've done. Our shadows are 82. We can close them down, making them darker. We can open them shadows up. I'm going to go all the way to 100. It's not much difference to 80 where we were, but it's just a tiny little bit. So if we look at that as our last sort of edit of the three, we've got our original image and we've got a nice, easy, subtle change to the image there. So we're going to finish the session one just there and answer any sort of questions that you might have. But basically, it's just an 11 step process that I've put together to help you create your own recipes and things you can save so that you can move them on to your sort of photography um, time and time again. So if you use the same background or you visit the same studios or you go to the same locations, sometimes light will be similar, the colors might be sort of similar and these <clears throat> recipes will just help your images pop right so we're going to end that there just watch i'll have to just come into it there and stop okay let's have a little look at a few recipes that i've built and i've put together for you just to give you an idea of once you've built a few how you sort of just go back and you just sort of flick through them really to give you sort of um the best of sort of uh, what you can get from them so what we're going to do is this is an image um, out of camera you can see the information top left of the picture that shows you the, the settings that I wear and which lens I have used so if anybody uses Lightroom then you can just press I for the information and that will scroll through information and information off but anyway <clears throat> let's have a little look we've got um, our ballerina doing a little bit of a vintage set <clears throat> and what we've got there is we've got little bits of tone so you can see now some of his presets would come in and they would automatically look incorrect so what you create doesn't always work for everything but as i go through them really slowly you can start to see how your own presets or these presets are acting within the set 
So there you go. So if you just click one of them, that'll action it. It'll make it your image. And then you can just look at your from to. So it's a lovely effect it is. But you can see again, there's lots of little sort of different tones and different sort of presets that you can create to get different looks. So that with this sort of formula I've given you, you'll be able to go away and create your own presets. But if we have a little look at a couple of images, some of them you'll have seen before of mine. There's a couple of new ones in here from recent shoots. There's some light, there's some dark, there's a kitty in there. And we've got a Comic-Con character for, with Captain America and also the Witcher character. So um, yeah, I'm showing you that you can sort of get around and use them all. If you apply them to an image and, you know, they look a bit too light or too dark. You can still, if you like something of that, select it and then go to your right hand panel and make some adjustments to it. So you can see now, as we're going through, some are more effective than others. That one there is very nice. And you can sort of turn that on. Well, not turn that on, turn it off even. Go back you. Bit heavy handed there, right, wrong button. Here we go again, that's uh, of our original. And that's just a preset. So it's got like a one touch preset, but then if you need to come over, you can still make adjustments on the preset itself. I'm on a bit of a go slow today, but you can adjust the presets nevertheless. So we'll go through a couple of the images and we'll pick out a few of the presets. So we've gone into a really dark tone there. We've gone for light tones, blue tones. Come on, let's have you popping out. We'll just give it a second, it's having a think. Brilliant, and then you can see how some are better than others, but if you have a whole vast arrangement, you know, don't make hundreds and hundreds, but if you've got something that covers darker palettes and lighter palettes itself, let's go with that one there, and we'll give you a little bit of a from two. <clears throat> if you notice, um, you know, it's nice working with different characters, but I've put together a selection of presets here and these are just some that I've sort of been working on for the different kinds of backgrounds and color tones that we use, you know, and they work very well. Some of them don't work at all. And let's see, have a little look there. And then if you wanted, you could just clone out later. I'm not going to clone this time. You saw earlier that when we cloned, it looked quite good. But we'll go through our image and again we know that some have got different feels and different kind of looks to them and if you create yourself a batch of these you'll be able to get to the look that you want very very quickly and something again if you're looking at sort of your presets just a bit like that and and some of your presets can be there to take away or tone down shadows. This is an image I recently shared. You can see in there that it's got quite a bit of shadowing in there. It's quite heavy. But the picture itself is pretty good. You know, we can just sort of go in. We can try a vintage kind of look. We've got this one that I've called Toy. And we've got a rustic one. That rustic one's bringing the shadows down quite nicely. And then we've got sort of different tones, maroons, browns, darks, lights. I've done two here, that was uh, Comic 1 and Comic 2. I put them together when dealing with vivid colours of such as like Captain America, Spider-Man and, you know, women in really, really, you know, <clears throat> colourful dresses. Uh, so if you're having a little look, just simple, easy processes out of camera to um, just cut, selecting one of the new recipes or presets. So... Again, you can do all sorts with them, and it's amazing how they extract different colours. So this one's out of camera, but if we have a little look at what it does, if we just hit uh, toning on there, that's just a um, blue tone, and that's now applying a really nice blue into the background. So if you're looking at the sort of at buying certain backgrounds, sometimes you can make one background look like many save yourself some money so that's the one in the studio that's how we've made it look in post uh, by using one of these simple easy to do presets we'll jump through this little bit as not to bore you 
we've got the Captain America dude in and I've got comic one and comic two so if we started with comic two it does do nothing come on dude there we go comic one and comic two which is darker so if we were looking at sort of comic one now and we were showing you how that's just given us quite a nice sort of teal kind of vintage sort of pastel colors without going too bold and again we've got captain america here out of camera it was fantastic this dude and we'll just go with the comic character tones and we'll hit number two there and it's given us a different feel more of a comic book kind of saturated look this one which i did earlier today but if we sort of bring him up let's take a little crop off our witcher character let's do a little crop there it is running a bit slow my computer but at the moment it's running a recording software as well in the background to help me make this video recording for yourselves so your machines will run quicker because you won't be running that software but if we start with all the tones we've got a darker one with him you've got an artistic one we've got this one we've got this one you know you can just really go with whatever you've created light brown one that is pretty cool in it and you know just you know even that's giving you quite a nice light look and the toy one and then the vintage one but um, let's have a little look there there we go and then just to finish not to sort of bore you on too much we've got our last one that we're just going to show you a cool character here let's just crop this in a little bit he sat on a bit of a stool so I'll just crop into that just a little bit crop down from the top just a touch and now I've got our image it's a little bit dark so if you were just making a brand new preset we would probably start again like I say with the formula but I'm going to take you through a few little presets as how they would sort of treat your image And you can see that they're all in there to give you a different portrait feeling and if we sort of went with that one you can see now if we zoom in too much you get a crazy bit of thing let's go to 66 just zoom out a bit zoom out a little bit more 53 and you can see now how that's given us a new preset that was the original image and that's now what it's pop into now if anybody's interested in those 12 presets that i've created they're a baseline preset you can see exactly how they've just worked um, they will be available to you um, via my paypal at 6.99 that will give you the set but um you know it's easy enough to go and create them yourselves but if you just want a helping hand and you want me to send all 12 of them to you either drop me a note in the messages or just simply go and pay $6.99 to my PayPal. I'll drop the details in my Facebook group and I will automatically send them to you um, using the um, email address on your PayPal. Or if you just send me a message to tell, tell me your PayPal and we'll get them out ASAP to you. But um, very effective and really good. But um, I hope if anything, um, the overall lesson of teaching you how to sort of go about creating a recipe and a preset as sort of give you a few tips of things of how to sort of go away and have a look um, i've been speaking to a few people at the studio in the last few weeks and some of you have not quite have an enjoyment or you're not quite enjoying lightroom and you, you're liking sort of using adobe camera raw and you're using a you know which is pretty similar to this is raw adobe raw in fairness it's it's pretty much identical now but you're using photoshop more but i find i vet all my images first from any job right through Lightroom and then I just select the best of the bunch to take them across to Lightroom for sort of layers and a bit more blending and a few more like photo effects but um, there we go end of part two there we go let me just close that down <laughs>